welcome back. I'm Rachel and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Sectoral Pool Show from Calkine TV, a special show covering all sectoral movements from the markets for the day. Australian shares are trading higher today on the back of gains from iron ore miners. The gains were further aided by wide expectations that the central bank will keep its cash rate at a record low despite a solid economic recovery and a housing boom. The Reserve Bank of Australia in a meeting later in the day is expected to hold its cash rate at a record low of 0.1% even as massive monetary stimulus and fiscal support has led to a speedier economic recovery and boosted the jobs market and consumer spending. From the sectoral front, heavyweight miners were the top boosts from the benchmark, jumping up as much as 2%, with iron ore giants BHP and Rio Tinto advancing. Among gold miners, De Grey Mining and Pantoro were the top gainers. Energy index rose after oil prices gained more than a percent overnight on signs of strong rebound in the United States and China. Australian energy stocks jumped as much as 1.9%, marking their biggest intraday percentage gain since April the 15th. Australia's sub-index for energy stocks takes cues from oil prices that rose on Tuesday as more U.S. states ease lockdowns and the European Union sought to attract more travellers. Aussie energy index are on track to snap its two-day losing streak. Australia's largest onshore oil producer, Beach Energy, is one of the top gainers in the sub-index, jumped as much as 4.9%. Fuel supplier Ampol and oil and gas explorer Oil Search also saw good gains. Among the losers, technology stocks fell after the tech-heavy Nasdaq composite dropped half a percent overnight due to losses in blue-chip tech companies. Australian tech companies like Wise Tech Global and Afterpay slipped. Banking stocks were down by around 0.3%, with the Bank of Queensland and Bendigo and Adelaide Bank leading the declines. Three of the big four banks traded in the red, while Westpac Banking Corp jumped as much as 0.7%. They extended their gains into a second day after reporting an over three-fold jump in its first half cash earnings. And now from the global markets, Asia's share markets were mostly higher on Tuesday as regional equity investors looked to signs of recovery from the coronavirus pandemic as major economies around the world reopen. In New Zealand, the benchmark S&P NZX50 index rose as much as 0.3% to 12,806.39, marking their fifth consecutive session of gains. Top gainers were Main Freight, they were up, followed by Genesis Energy and Spark New Zealand. MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside of Japan was up by 0.05% on the back of a positive lead from Wall Street overnight. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index also opened higher, Japan and mainland China's markets remained closed on Tuesday for holidays. That was dampening trading volumes across the region. The brighter tone in Asia markets comes after a stronger session on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 0.7% to end at 34,113 .23 points. While the S&P 500 gained 0.27% to 4,192 .66 with most of the gains concentrated in industrial and commodity shares. The Nasdaq dropped 0.48% as tech stocks lagged, stocks that investors saw as beneficiaries of a pandemic recovery. Energy stocks also gained on the back of higher oil prices. Moving on now to updates from the currency markets. The dollar fell after an unexpected slowdown in U.S. manufacturing growth, and that prompted investors to trim bets that a booming U.S. economy could boost the greenback. Data showed shortages of basic materials and transport snarls depressed the Institute for Supply Management. And that's the manufacturing survey by 4.7 points to 64.7 toppling the dollar from a three-week peak on the yen and a two-week high on the euro. With Asia trade thinned by holidays in Japan and China, further moves were muted, leaving the dollar to drift up slightly off overnight levels. The common currency rose 0.3% overnight and found additional support 
from a surge in German retail sales and record high Eurozone factory activity. The Australian and New Zealand dollars edged a fraction lower on Tuesday after bouncing overnight, while the US dollar index against a basket of key rivals tacked on 0.05% to 91.036. Traders' focus is now on service figures due on Wednesday and payrolls data on Friday, and markets seem finely balanced. Benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury yields fell 2.5 basis points on Monday following the ISM miss as a New York Fed President John Williams reiterated that the recovery so far is not nearly enough to prompt monetary policy tightening. Also on the horizon are central bank meetings in Britain and Norway and the Reserve Bank of Australia's policy outcome. No changes are expected from the RBA, although the tone of the statement might provide hints on whether the bank will upgrade economic forecasts it's due to publish on Friday. The Australian dollar was 0.1% weaker in morning trade at 77.56 cents and the Kiwi a tad softer at 71.94 cents. Sterling was perched near a weak high on the euro and had overnight punched through its 20-day moving average against the dollar as traders reckon the Bank of England may announce a slowdown of its bond purchases at its Thursday meeting. Elsewhere, cryptocurrency Ether extended its record run, zooming to a new record peak of $3,457.64 before pulling back a fraction. Lastly, let's take some updates from the commodity markets. Crude oil prices moved around 1% higher on Monday on the back of robust Chinese economic data and the vaccination program in the U.S. Brent crude oil for July delivery traded 0.16% up at $67.67 per barrel, whereas WTI crude oil figures for June delivery traded at $64.56 per barrel. That's up 0.11%. Around one-third of the total U.S. population has now been vaccinated. China's crude oil import set a seasonal record in February and March due to a surge in car sales and improved local travel. However, rising coronavirus cases in India is still a matter of concern. Bloomberg Commodity Spot Index reached a nine-year high levels on Wednesday, on, sorry, yesterday on strong economic recovery and rising energy demands. The commodities prices climbed to newer heights as a rebound in economic recovery bolstered the demand for almost every commodity. The biggest commodity of the group, crude oil, climbed up after the European Union proposed ease in travel restrictions. Other commodities like copper, timber and iron ore have also skyrocketed after the recovery of the world's largest economies from the pandemic rapidly increased their demands. Infrastructure development, an ease in travel restrictions and a surge in car sales coupled with robust vaccination programs are some of the leading reasons for economic recovery and commodities demand. That's all for now from the Sectoral Pulse for today. That's been a data-heavy day. Stay tuned for more of the latest news and market updates. I'm Rachel Jones signing off for Calkine TV.